Morning, good afternoon. Elliot. Hey, Elliot. Peter Thomas. And Greetings, Thomas. folks. Is it okay if we just call you all Thomas? Collective name. It means twins. <laughs> that would be funny. Funny. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll send you my mortgage, Thomas. T-W-O. -T I'll send you mine. <laughs> Yeah, no, you, you, you send me your cryptocurrencies. <laughs> right. <laughs> Will do. Oh, but I want you to send me Elon Musk's cryptocurrencies. <laughs> yeah, I paid off my, I finished paying my mortgage uh, a year ago. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's pretty amazing. But... <laughs> um, we have these, we have a, a Amer well, Americans get to deduct their interest rates. I don't know what happens in Europe. That's not the state case in Canada, but Canadians get to take their house as a uh, tax-free ca um, capital um, gain. Um, so as a result, it turns out it's worth borrowing money to invest it to pay off your mortgage. So, so like, so if you sell it in the future there's no capital gains tax on your primary residence only uh, uh and what about uh what is it called like inheritance tax if you if you hand it over to your kids uh they pay tax on the house on the estate yeah interesting hmm. um i think but but if you're smart and you know that you're dying soon, then you can sell it to your kids um, prior to your death at a very t advantageous rate, and then of course it's their house, and they they didn't you didn't have to do anything. Um, yeah, I think there's something like that. Anyway, um, welcome Yogesh and Penguin to our group. Um, Thank Hank. you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Penglin Yang from Panda Mobile Corporation, and uh, I'm very interested in this uh, uh, rights working group, and uh, I'm here to see if I can do something to help or uh, get a promote uh, understanding of this uh, subject. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Yogesh, and uh, I work closely with Thomas Fossati, whom you were conversing Few minutes back so uh, i also work in verizon open source project and look forward to be part of this uh, conversations okay wonderful here's hank uh, sorry for that uh overlapping meetings due to time zone changes so i had to stay a little bit longer on the other one all right thanks for joining us since you have two of the three polls, no, you've only got one, but all these issues. All right, so um, we're gonna walk through uh, for sure this one. Um, and I think we're gonna have to spend some time on um, understanding the issues for the other ones. Um, unless Dave, you think this one is such low hanging fruit that we should just deal with it now. Personally, I think it's trivial. Meaning, I think it's done. Okay. Um, there was a comment yeah. from Ned. Um, Ned right, has said, all right, if you look at Ned's comment, scroll down a little bit. Scroll down more. Scroll down more. Okay, and stop. Okay. Um, you can see uh, how he ends his comment there. He says, if B and C are not hardware, only A, then I agree with Dave's analysis. Okay. And you can see I respond, the text says, the device illustrated includes A, a BIOS stored in read-only memory, B, an operating system kernel, and C, an application or workload. So B and C are not hardware by definition because B is an operating system kernel and an application. 
So since his if is true, then he agrees with my analysis. <laughs> okay. All right. So what you're saying is that he didn't read deeply enough to appreciate. He, he, he the read the diffs. He didn't read the context around the diffs because the yeah. context around the diffs answered his question. I didn't have to change that because the text already said that. Right. All right. Let's merge this then as it is then. Since he's not here, then I don't know. That's why I think it's trivial because. <laughs> All right. Okay. He's already got two other approvals and he said he agreed if that was true. And I just showed it was true in the text. So. All right. So this is uh, very many um, diffs um, there from Hank going through and just editing. Um, I didn't have any great problems with anything here. Um, I started, uh, but I didn't get very far. I added two, uh, suggestions, but then I, st I I've only gotten as far as my second suggestion. Okay. Do you want more time to look through it then? It, either on the call or offline. I'm happy to do either one. So. Okay, so you there's a suggestion. Or I'm happy to go away and come back in 15 minutes and see if I'm at the end. So um, that looks here, good. Yeah, so I guess Hank isn't on, right? Other places he has Hank drawn dissertation procedures, plural. Uh, I, maybe I forgot the plural, I guess. Well, so it's either, it's... yeah, either leave the A or add the S. I don't care which. <clears throat> yeah, so you're they saying there could be an S here. The... Do the do the uh, actually the plurals on okay so, Hank, so you're saying do it the other way hank you can see my yeah. suggestion is to add the a back yeah. which you want it to be plural sorry <laughs> yeah but it's consistent as you said i i was i was uh, moving a lot of stuff to plural um uh, no. contentious ones is now you're saying no to ones. um to um michael no. because s has to go on procedure not attestation in the next line, not in this line, Michael. It's okay to, exactly. Yeah, I agree. Okay, sorry, I interrupted you, Hank, but it's because yeah, not, uh, right, so continue. There was a, was a, because we're talking about plural here, uh, policies and policy uh, is still, I think, a little bit uh, uh, mixed today. Uh, to some extent, to, due to my fault of not realizing that uh, policy is actually okay to use, uh, so I may I might have changed my mind mid midway on this. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. So, but just as a heads up, it's the only thing I'm a little bit uh, sorry about. Um, I did not really um, fell through with that. Okay, Michael, add suggestion to batch. Since I think we all agree on that one. Uh, next one, English meaning, I think, if not, is better than alternatively, uh, because it's talking about, and then it has to decide. It's not an alternative to deciding. It's if it decides not to, then. And so that's why I changed alternatively to if not. That's fine. Thank okay. you. And that's as far as I've gotten so far as to that line, so. Again, it's supposed to be editorial. I, to some extent, yeah. with compositive wise, I changed oh. text, but I went through a uh, way with that because that was his original text. Um, uh, I did have another comment later on. I think I had a third one, so I think I must have gotten far there because I'm now remembering a third comment that I had. Um, and it was, I think, in one place you'd edit in um, remote attestation as opposed to remote attestation procedures, like you were adding the word remote. But not procedures, and I didn't know if that was intentional or not intentional. That might have been intentional. That's like it's no. Uh, there it is. There's my question. All right. So compare three 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 and three three seven. Yeah, that's a good point. So it could not be attestation, and I was not sure because remote attestation procedures, of course, could be also always interpreted as rats. And I'm not I'm sure ask if, if Google had... Pay makes use of rats. I'm not. I'm pretty sure they don't. So I didn't want to create that association there unintentionally. My only point is I was expecting 333 and 337 to use the same term, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Unless you can say yeah, oh, the is, meaning is different. So that I don't care fine. which term it is, So, but it seems like consistency yeah. would be good. 
Yeah, consistency is good. So yeah, re small, uh, non-capitalized remote attestation can become remote attestation procedures uh, capitalized here. I agree. And somehow this is not procedures. <laughs> yeah. Gee, drop an E. Sorry. Oh, too many E's. Yeah, you can see it's uh, yeah. There you go. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Cool. Now, that one's as far as I've gotten, so that was my third. I thought you were saying, asking if I should capitalize the trailing S. Yeah. I wasn't going to ask that. If we could slowly run through this, I don't know if this is the best. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like I said, I'm okay either way. So if you want me to review it offline, I'm guessing it'll take me another 15, 20 minutes or something to go through the rest. All right. What I would prefer... Like that is that we spent the time for now on the issues or the other pull requests yeah so sounds good to me. briefly go and look at lawrence's rewording um, there i think both hank and i had issues with this since it's being a meaning change that affects a lot of this document and multiple other documents if we were to accept this yeah i couldn't really I couldn't really understand the art, the um, the what the right word, the um, motivation for this, uh, except that I like blank lines. So, <laughs> um, shorter paragraphs I think are easier to read, but beyond that, I couldn't tell. The text just seemed to move around on me. Now, um, the meaning change is that previously, your evidence was uh, was generated by an attester. And a tester can have multiple layers of, you know, a testing environments to target environments. Okay, he changed it such that each layer is called a separate a tester, and so um, that means you either have a whole bunch of evidences in a chain, which we don't use that term, or you have uh, one evidence that co comes from multiple attesters, which is also, you know, problematic in other texts and things, and so. And because he's talking about the root attester and several other attesters that are not roots, and I said, no, that's not the term that we've defined. So I think that's the same thing you were calling out too, Hank. Yes. Yeah, that is mm -hmm. that is like the change in the concept. Yeah, because this changes uh, yeah. a lot of other places in this document. It would change eat. It would change the TEEP document. It would change the CCC white paper, and so on. So I think we should not go here. The, the ripple effect, as Hank calls it, is true. Is it claims or evidence? Well, like in EAT, you have multiple claim sets in the evidence. All right, and, the, and he would redefine it to say each claim set in the evidence is called, you know, maybe evidence okay. or something. So I think that's big enough to, given that he's not on the call, I think that's big enough to just um, push back and say, um, there. Um, sorry, let me actually ask, uh, say this change would have impl implications to many other documents. Teat, uh, what else did you say? Eat. Eat. CCC and, white paper and, and other sections of this document. And there's probably more, but at least out of the I don't know which other working right, group documents you Let's let's, let's leave it with that that I didn't feel I had a strong reason to change it. Um, mm -hmm. um so I'm just want to uh leave it like that. Okay. That was the whole document. Okay, so what I would like to do is Hank, do you want to lead us to some of the some specific ones that you think are a bigger problem? There was also some from Dave. And yeah, the bottom two are ones that I filed like right at the end of the session or something based on discussion in the meeting. So. Uh, Hank, do you want to lead us to any one specific or just should I pick one at random? I would start at the beginning, so to speak. From my, from the scope of my, that's not the beginning. That's the end. Um, so, um, yeah, that one. It's it's simple stuff, but it was beyond editorial, I guess. These are comments from Catherine. No, these are comments from me. 
Oh, okay. I thought you were <laughs> uh, process, you had process so to review. If if you look at these two sections, uh, you see a strong asymmetry between those two. Um, especially because reference values talks about format and conveyance a lot, and uh, as a conceptual message, okay, but appraisal policies doesn't. It is not a conceptual message that we cover in this document. Maybe that's the reason. But uh, when you read it the first time, and you don't know that, uh, I guess, when you read it in the same context and same weight in this section, in this, in this super section, uh, to me it was surprising that uh, 3.1 was so short. And, and somehow, I, suddenly, I read a lot of things about how to convey reference values in 3.2. I was like, okay, but I didn't see that in 3.1. Why? So that is a, is a surprising to the reader and violates the principle of this surprise. Um. Uh, I'm surprised as well. I'd have to look at the text to see what you're referring to. Meaning, after reading it, I will probably agree with you, but I, that doesn't ring any bells to me. So, so that's the two bits. Hmm. Hmm. Is that the two bits? That just doesn't look like it. Is it? Is I reviewed. No, the, uh, I, I see exactly what you're saying now. Because you're you're referring okay. to those three bullets being in three point two, and there's no equivalent of those three bullets in three point one, and that's the asymmetry that you're observing. Yeah, probably. It, it looked smaller than I remember it, but it's probably just a screen. Yeah. Um. Um. I agree with your oh. issue. I don't necessarily right now Can have make it a preferred way to fix it, but I agree with your issue. Hmm. Um, so, so I think that this comes partly because we are, uh, we believe that appraisal policies are primarily, um, things that you type in and an operator types into the thing. Mm, uh, no, we don't. It's stuff that get conveyed across a line in the day, in the diagram, whether they're conveyed across a CLI or they're conveyed across a protocol. In the implementation that I'm familiar with, I'm not the implementer of it. That's just the Microsoft one. It's conveyed across a REST API. Okay. Um, I, I, what I was trying to say is that that reference values were we were more anxious about their conveyance than we were the pro policies, which are, maybe are more obviously um, security critical. They're both equivalently critical, but um, the policies maybe feel more, you know, it's something I do, even if if it's a cost of, is it across an administrative boundary? Okay, so, so I think the points of the three, okay, I'm, I'm now reading through this again. I think one reason for the asymmetry is about the, con, the, the you said there was two things about formats and conveyance. The conveyance, I think for the three bullets is really talking about how reference value providers, it's really an observation based on the fact that reference value providers can easily be combined with other roles more easily than say the uh, verifier owner could be uh, combined with some other role. Uh, and so that's why, you know, this, the, the conveyance itself may be combined with one of the other lines, I think is the point of the three bullets there, where that's probably much less true in the appraisal policies. Um, but then your second one is about data format, and that's the bottom one where it talks about the actual data format, our specific implementations, doesn't define a general purpose format for them or general means for comparison. Um, we could have a similar sentence about the actual data format uh, is up to the implementation, the architecture does not define any general purpose format for them. We could have an equivalent statement to that in the appraisal policies. That would be pretty easy to, to add is the, the bottom equivalent. So I, I think in reading through this, I understand that the, the, the reason for the asymmetry for conveyance makes sense to me. The reason for asymmetry in the data format doesn't, and that part is easy for me to fix or for you to fix or for anybody to fix. Okay. What do you think, Hank? Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, so first of all, I, I would say uh, we want to want to keep people in the dark uh, with respect to why we think it's less applicable to appraisal. So that should be content probably in the, 
3.1 that prepares uh, 3.2, which, okay, and this, this makes more sense here, and that's because in 3.1 it didn't make so much sense. So the reader is not, uh, is, is basically understands why this document does not really talk about how these move from entity to entity, or how they're collapsed, uh, move between collapsed entities or such. So I'm fine with, with, with if there would be something also addressing that. Uh, with, if, if the, the format thing, yeah, I would agree, is, is uh, easier to fix. Um, we could also say less in 3.2, because I mentioned those three bullets basically just say, to me anyway, um, that your conveyance could be combined with something else, and we could collapse those three bullets into something less precise and just say they could be conveyed as part of some other message as well, but that loses a little bit of precision. To this message type here, but I think down below where the Votai diagram lives, uh, we uh, we elaborate on on how to leverage protocols and convey things with formats a lot. I yeah. don't think that has to be discussed here, to be honest. You mean the three bullets you're saying? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, in general. Yeah. Uh, also, the how to how to stack yeah. stuff into existing protocols, uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, so I would be fine if we remove the three bullets or replace those three bullets just with a single sentence, whichever you'd prefer. Can I interject something here? So, uh, please. Um, uh, I think that it's kind of missing a, a key point in the, the difference between the two of them. Regardless of where an appraisal policy comes from, it's really up to the administration of where the appraisal is doing to make a decision whether to put that appraisal policy in place. And the reference values are coming from someone else, and you, you may be using them, and you need to have them conveyed to you in a certain way, but ultimately the trust is coming from the provider of those values. And so the, uh, there's a, a trust decision that says I trust the provider of the values, but I have to um, – I need those values in order to do the function of appraisal. Mm -hmm. Right, and I, yeah. I don't really see that in those in in that there's a, there's a there's a different kind of trust there, right? The the trust for appraisal really rests in the configuration of the appraiser of what policy they're going to use, and that comes from the administration of the appraiser. The yeah. reference values, you can say I'm going to use them, but ultimately if those values are no good. Your appraisals are no good. Mm -hmm. Um. I have a different question to ask, but it's triggered by this. It's not the same topic. So we'll see if anybody else has any comments on this before I bring up. I, a, I, I think I agree with, with Peter, particularly in the business, the fact that you have to you, they cross an administrative boundary. And that's why I think we are more anxious about them and why we have more uh -huh. words about them. Um, uh -huh. I don't object to making adding words to appraisal policy, but I think that removing them from reference values is not the right approach. Uh -huh. So who wants to take a shot at uh, taking this one for generating a pull request, I mean? So I guess we need to ta decide on the approach. Is we adding yeah. words to yeah. appraisal policy? Um, I, th I think one simple thing to do is to add uh, text into appraisal policy that's equivalent to that bottom tiny paragraph, although it's going to be shorter than that one because... Um, you can strip out the things that don't apply. Um, but as far as what to do with the three bullets, I don't have a preference. Let me get these nice. Yeah, so not all that will apply. So things like uh, the reference value doesn't, the, the general means for comparison. Um, the appraisal policies text already talks about comparison. So like that phrase doesn't make sense. So a subset of that text makes sense up above. I'm happy to do that part if people want it, but uh, I don't know what to do. What's the top part? Copy link address. I thought that. Apparently, we can refer, easily refer to the paragraph itself. So, yeah, so you are proposing this sentence, something like this sentence, be added. But that well, you subset of it, but yes, yeah, subset. Yeah. But you didn't know about what to say about the points. I don't think we need any points. I think that's enough to do that. Uh, so, Michael, are you proposing no change, well, meaning leave the bullets in the bottom one and do nothing on the top one for that point? No, I'm suggesting that the actual data format, this kind of sentence. I think that you're saying that we're we're a saying we're not telling you how to what what they look like, and we're not telling you, and we're telling you it's out of scope. 
that's what I got from this last bit that I think you're saying needs to be. All right. I, all right. Remember, Hank had two points. One was about the conveyance. One was about the data format. My proposal is about the data format. The conveyance is oh. the discussion on the three bullets. Do you have any proposal for what to do around the conveyance discussion or to leave it as is? I don't think that we can say anything intelligent about the conveyance of appraisal policies. Okay. Okay. So you're proposing um, to leave the asymmetry is what I'm hearing. Yeah. So I don't mind that. And I've, and I said that I think the asymmetry is to, because mm -hmm. Peter said reference yeah. values are crossing a boundary and appraisal policies mostly are not. Mm -hmm. or if, if, if they do enter the verifier organization from external, they enter through a legal contract. Um, and, 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 and then the verifier organization has to figure out how to implement them, mm -hmm. whether they deploy them via rest protocol or CLI is not relevant to the lawyers that wrote the contract. Right. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's what I think. Right. Whereas, whereas I can see, you know, a verifier reaching mm -hmm. out to a manufacturer and getting the reference values or vice versa. And mm -hmm. that they would need to agree on a conveyance and a security and blah, blah, blah. Right. Okay. Um, I, any other opinions before I bring up a topic that's related to the data format text? Well, we don't have a volunteer for this yet, so I guess I'll Great. assign myself. Okay. That's fine. Great. Um, like I said, for the bottom one, I'd be happy to do it. I just didn't know what to do about the top part, but if you want to take it, I'm happy with that too. I'll, I'll yeah, I can do the bottom part, part too. <laughs> the to yeah, okay. okay, well, bring up your issue, then we'll figure okay. out if I have any so idea. My, 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 my so I was actually asked a question because I was giving um, the a, an overview of the RATS uh, architecture to the Confidential Computing Consortium TAC. And so Thomas Vasati and I were on the call. I don't know if anybody else here was. Hmm. And so... Um, uh, there was a question that came up, uh, and I think it was in that meeting, so Thomas can tell me if he remembers it. And it had to do with the, the for, you can see with the phrase about the actual data format and semantics of any reference values are specific, and the architecture does not define a general purpose format for reference values. So I'm going to paraphrase the, the comment, um, and, and I'll, I'll give you get, get, get the actual specific question in a second here. Because the reference values cross administrative domains, and therefore um, you need some interoperability, right? So if you're a verifier, you might need to get reference values uh, for each uh, component in that layered attestation. So you got to get reference values from a bunch of different entities. And now, if you think in your mind about the Votai diagram that says about the different protocols and things, so what if if each reference values uh, provider provides stuff in a different format? And of course, your verifier is going to end up implementing a bunch of different reference value format parsers, right? And so the question that came up is, um, okay, well, the EAT specifies current state, okay, in terms of claim sets that, have, that compose current state, whether that current state is in evidence or attestation results, but it's current state. And reference values are basically desired state. And the reference values are specific to claims. And so for each claim, you might have, here's the claim, here's the expected value, and so on. And the real question was, why couldn't you use eat for desired state, which would make it much easier to do comparison because you've got the claim IDs in them. And I, because I, this is where I had said eats are for attestation results or eats are for evidence. And the question was, couldn't you use them for reference values? So what you're really saying is um, uh, the reference values are, here's a bunch of, uh, of, of claims that you need to, uh, uh, um, you need to put yourself in this state so that you can now, your, your version I, your version number is five and the appraisal policy says you know the current version has to be greater than or equal to the version in the reference value and, and, and so are you conceiving that verifiers in some cases maybe not even know what the semantics of the of the claim is just as long as they can match them exactly yeah and so that sounds that's reasonable question. to me that it could be yeah. used here because if so, me. then the text that says the architecture document doesn't define a general purpose format and specific implementations is not true because we don't make that, would not be true in that case. We've never taught, and, I, and my answer was, RATS has never actually discussed that to my knowledge. The question has never come up. To me, this seems like this. A, something that belongs in the EAT document. I don't think that everyone wants to have the reference values as EAT. No, 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 no. It um, was a good no. because this is saying it's outside the scope of RATS. Yeah. Because that was what I was exactly. saying before in the overview was to say, 
EAT only covers um, attestation results and evidence potentially, right? If you want to use EAT in, in, in either or both of those, but it does not cover reference values. The answer was, well, why? <laughs> it seems like it would make sense was the point, so. Yeah, the, maybe we can uh, say less here. And don't say that. You should just, it should just say that it's going to be done by another document. Yeah, that would be fine, right? Can EAT handle a range? Not correct. You cannot just refer to future work. That is not a legit way to do this, uh, unfortunately. So, uh, Elliot, not at present, but it could define a minimum or a maximum, and your appraisal policy could say whether it's the minimum or the maximum. Um, you could construct a way to put it in an EAT, but I don't think there's anything in EAT right now that covers ranges. Nothing that makes it hard. Or sets either, right? You, yeah. you could ask the same question about sets, Elliot, you know, A uh, or so, B. So, well, oh, wait, I was just getting started. Yeah, I know, but the, the answer is no. It can just be, here's the type length and value. And so the type is a particular claim and the value is, you know, whatever. And that's what it can do right now. Right. So, and nice so code to the, run. the question is, uh, what, what I think the overarching question is, how important, to, how important is uh, this sort of interoperability capability in terms of the, the reference values in the context in terms of standardizing, is it so important that you would want to warp the EAT architecture at this point? That's the question. Oh, I think that is a part of the question. I, yeah. The question is, is, do you want to impose the task of interoperability of uh, reference values to EAT now? Wow. Uh, actually, so I was question. asking a more general question. Do I want to have it be in scope for rats? Because RATS yeah, is trying to not do yes. protocols, but it is trying to do data formats. Okay, is it within the charter of RATS to talk about data formats for reference values or not? Given that you need interoperability for reference values, this is more of a, a RATS than E, because you could choose to do it not in E. You could do it in something yes. else. But. Of course, so so uh, that's true. So, but to, the, the the agreement when doing chartering was we will recharter to address that. So for now, the answer yeah. is obviously no. It is not in scope of the charter. Right. Right. Yeah, so I'm just relaying since this was a topic that the yeah. CCC asked yeah. about, they were kind of surprised that RATS was not taking on, and and are and yeah, I think that I think you're you're correct that the charter does not let us right now, but perhaps we don't want to paint ourselves in the corner in the uh, architecture document and just say it's uh, uh, and, and not say that it is uh, what it doesn't do. Well, yeah. So I guess yeah. what I would say is also don't paint yourself into administrative quarters, right? If if you think that this is the right thing to do in this context, to reuse EATS in, these, in this context, but to make some changes to EATS to allow for this, assuming it's a reasonable thing for EATS to, to, to take on, you know, in, in that document, then, then that, you know, the more specificity you have, I think, mm -hmm. in, in these sorts of contexts, the, the less work it will be later. Okay. This is what so I had to bring this up that, because if I'm going to move that text up, it affects uh, what that text is going to say, uh, and I may have to edit the text in the uh, reference value section too, not just add it in the add equivalent text into the um, appraisal policy section. So that's why you want to do it. Not, I thought I think you should do it, not me. Then, yeah. Okay. Um, so just um, so this is what the charter says right now. Uh, the procedures for this activity out of scope for this working without, without re retardering. And so I think it's entirely reasonable that we would, we would recharter to do what, to make it possible either to do it in eat or in eat plus plus or whatever. Um, cause it sounds like Elliot, as Elliot said, you, we do need some extensions to eat to make it work. Um, depending on the appraisal policy, if all your appraisal policies are either True. quality or less than or greater than or something like that that only needs one value, you don't. But if you need, say, contains in a set, um, intersection is non-null or, uh, you know, Agreed. intersection Agreed. equals Agreed. that kind of thing. Yeah. So. so there's subsets you can do immediately, but but yeah. let's yeah. not, yeah. I don't Correct. think it's, I, I think we agree that We're we don't go into that here. To put this in the, in the charter, but I'm, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm not sure exactly why this matters to this text, but I'm going to let you tell tell us in the perfect way <laughs> in the form of of a text proposal. All right, because that second so, sentence I'm going to basically remove or or get into the first one by yeah. removing stuff. So about the the one that says what it doesn't do. 
Good. All right. Let's go on. Yep. Okay. Then uh, uh, did you want to look so, at so, Brendan's or jump to one of Hank's? Uh, I, I was gonna go to. I go to. We'll go to Brendan's here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this one was in the discussion around the three methods for freshness between timestamps, nonces, and um, the, the, the topic formerly known as handles, um, for which I think we kind of... <laughs> Still known, uh, referred to as handles, please. We have not... Uh, <laughs> Since we have not talked about that issue yet, it's, 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 it shall be currently referred to as the topic formerly known as handles, okay? Okay. Uh, because there's a separate issue for that one. Um, <laughs> So Brennan had asked um, why local clocks are a problem, right? He said even MCUs have them. So because uh, we'd mentioned like you know nonces don't require clocks, and the 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 thing formerly known as handles don't require clocks except for at the distributor. And so he says, well, why is that a problem? Because even MCUs have a clock. And um, I answered by referring to the TEE use case because that comes up in TEEP, which is our number one or first in line customer for rats. Um, in the TEE use case. Um, you have to have a trusted clock. And so M Michael correctly asked, well, what do you mean by trusted clock? So please scroll down because I elaborate and answer your question, Michael. A trusted clock is one that the uh, that any entity outside the TEE cannot tamper with and mess with the time. So it doesn't have to be synchronized. Even a, even a trusted or secure relative clock means that your rich execution system can't tamper with the clock. And so example, it is uh, fairly common to have TEEs today that the only way for code and TE to get any source of time, including how much time has passed since I did X, mm -hmm. is to ask the REE and the REE can lie. And so that means if you're trying to do something like, has my cert expired in, and you want your TE to do that check, you cannot do that securely because there can be a lie in has it passed. And the answer from the REE is, no, we're still in the valid time, really, ha, ha, ha. So that's what we mean by trusted is somebody else can't tamper with the clock. And so uh, right now the proposal in this one, I think um, can affect uh, maybe two places in the document I could imagine. One is in the TEE use case, okay? Because a lot of this discussion is very specific to the TEE use case where it comes up. Um, and then maybe in the discussion later on that it refers to where we said this requires a clock and it might be problematic in some use cases, we can maybe refer back to that specific use case by section number. As an example, so okay. That's what I'm thinking as to how to address this. If people like that approach, I'm happy to do it. Fine with it. I don't so, see. So, any... if it's the case yeah. that that TEEs usually don't have clocks today, are you you basically well? Uh, I, I would say they have I'll, to I'll grow. Give you, them. I'll give you the two examples <clears throat> that I know of between Intel and uh, ARM. Because uh, I see Thomas Fasadi just dropped off um, yeah. on Intel, um, SGX. Uh, it's only it's only access to a clock is through the REE or by trusting a component called the Intel Management Engine that um, some entities choose to trust and some entities don't choose to trust. And on ARM, or right, ARM specifies the design and chip vendors can choose what to do, and the trusted clock in the ARM design is optional, and so some chip vendors do it and some don't. No, you just that's the design flexibility. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying I can't say which one is most, whether most TEs have or most TEs don't, but um uh because it's a matter of debate, but I could say a significant number uh don't. And whether it is most or not depends on whether you think the Intel management engine is trusted and whether the things that you look at are things that support the ARM one and which one is a higher, you know, percentage, which I don't know. So so I want to say most. Many. So, so sure. I'm just thinking about about. Um, so the REE can't tamper with, but I think the real point is that not that whether the REE can tamper with it, but rather it's consistent with the verifier's clock. Um, no, because no? if you think Why? about if you think about in the um, uh, uh, nonce case or the epic ID, let's talk about the uh, the the thing formerly known as handles case, right? Mm -hmm. The verifier does not need any clock. No, it does not need a clock. Agreed. And so, um, the uh, sorry, the, but that's uh, not the point. The point is, he's asking 
the reason why we would use the the okay, the, sorry, sorry, sorry. the handles sorry. the the epic right, gotcha. ID no, no. is because I, I, we... I would, uh, different example. Sorry, I came up with the wrong example. Yeah. Um, think about the uh, nonce example. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the nonce example, the you don't need any synchronized clock, so it doesn't matter whether the tester, if the tester has a clock, it doesn't matter whether it has any relationship whatsoever to the um, to the verifier's clock, right? As long as it doesn't go backwards. As long as it doesn't go backwards, right? And so uh, we have an example in the appendix as to where the verifier needs to know. Uh, the distinction between when the evidence was signed versus when the claim value was signed. And we said mm -hmm. an example of how you can do that is you put the delta um, into the claim, right? So you say, here's the value. I took it this many seconds ago. And as long as I can trust the attester's uh, clock, then of course I can trust it was that many seconds ago, right? I don't know what time it was. Fair but enough. It was that okay. Many okay. And so uh, can I tamper with that? If I can tamper with X many seconds ago, the IRE could change that to be zero seconds ago. Right. Okay, fair enough. So what are we doing with this then exactly? So I, I right now the approach that I would propose that is that um, I add a very tiny amount of elaboration. I'm guessing it's one sentence or two sentences max into the use case about TEEs. Mm -hmm. And then uh, make sure that the text that talks about um, one of the disadvantages is it needs a local clock. That's in, I think, the freshness section for um, uh, like timestamps. I can refer back to the that, for example, see the discussion in the TE use case section. Something that's just a backwards reference, but doesn't have the technical content in it. So that's what I'm thinking. Is the technical point would be made in the TE use case as an example, and then later stuff would refer back to that section as an example. There we go. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know which yeah, example. That's not quite is, right. But, yeah. but I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So let's go on. Yep. Sounds good. Uh, introduction in, of terms in two types of environments of an attester. Suddenly acronyms appear. <laughs> yes. uh, you mean without extension? Yeah, I guess so. And uh, no, no context. Yep. Yeah. I think, I think it's due to reordering of the text, I think. Quite possibly. Uh, maybe. Yeah, actually. It was. Uh, In 3.3, it's expanded. Yeah, ref so, 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 ref references. Like, like, like uh, this is just oh. thrown in here. And uh, we don't have any references for this at this, this point. Especially, I mean, a TEE uh, somehow gets elaborate later so, on. TPMs so you want to okay. have a, a reference here. You It's not yeah. just that the acronym's not expanded, but that you want to reference the thing yeah this is this is crucial to everything here and we just throw out a barrage of of terms and and maybe that is not now the user would stop reading this and get educates uh, educating himself on 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 why, what this actually means and especially the things we're not really elaborated on like ESEs, uh which are actually not really easy to uh find a good reference for also i, I just looked at it a little bit I think that's a reasonable point. I mean, it's the sort of thing that the RSC editor would ask, although good luck on finding a reference for BIOS firmware. You can probably come up with something, but I'm curious to know which one. <laughs> yeah, the, the letter actually I, uh, was so a catch-all thing that BIOS, so, okay, it's in it's somewhere. So, so, yeah, so in that context, I would say it's enough to to tell people what it is. Okay. You know. Someone's been living in, uh, been using their Commodore 64 for the last 40 years and has never heard of a BIOS. So, um, yeah, whatever. somewhere the RFC editor has a list of uh, acronyms that don't need expanded or referenced and stuff. I'm just wondering if BIOS is on that list. I feel doubtful. Abbreviation system. I'm just going to look it up here. Well, you're looking that up. I have a question about the introduction. It is not. It? Here. About the what? About the introduction in particular. Okay, it, it, of the whole document? Well, in particular, section one. Yeah, okay. okay. As opposed so, to the introduction of that section is what I meant. Uh, um, yeah, so um, the introduction, uh, I, I might put through a PR on this, but 
I'm, I'm going to get it wrong if I do, but it might be a, a good way to start the discussion. I think there's a, a little bit of motivation that's not quite present um, in the introduction. It's rather abrupt. Why, why is this architecture at all important? It's a question that should be answered, answered first and foremost. In the and um, so I, it just it jumps into up. things too too deep too quickly. Oh yeah, it's the we're not talking the deep end of the pool. We're talking an ocean here. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Sometimes it gets dumb to you know you have to explain the fact that there are computers and IoT devices and stuff. And I don't you're right. Go, I mean, I don't yeah. want to go quite so dumb, but. But to say, you know, what, why is this important is probably something that's worthwhile saying. Mike, Michael, do you want to open an issue? Do you want me to, or, or do you want me to open it or what? I'll, I'll write it something here right now. Okay. When you issue a PR, just mention uh, that it is intends to fix or fix this number or whatever. And then yeah, you yeah. can see it's related. Yeah. Cool. I mean, if people disagree with me, tell me now, and I'll. No, I think we uh, we uh, for the sake of readability, we reduce text here, and maybe it's not uh, readable due to another problem now. So I think balance is fine, and uh, now is the time for, to do this high level uh, things. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right, so I put into the chat my uh, findings. Um, it is not currently on the RFC editor's list of acronyms that don't need expansion, but I can find uh, several RFCs that don't expand it that went to the RFC editor and don't have a reference. And so I think it's an omission on their list and I think it belongs on their list. So I mean, I don't think we should, don't think we need to expand BIOS or have a reference for it. It's my conclusion based on other RFCs that have gone through. I wouldn't. I mean, nobody knows what BIOS stands for anyway. Yeah, exactly. That's why I say I think that I think separately I can send email to the RFC editor to ask them to add it to their abbreviations list. Yeah. With a star. Yeah, that's like it's like nobody knows what TCP stands for either, except for people in the transport area. Yeah, and 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 SID and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's different than TCP IP. Oh my god. <laughs> I was assured that I was no. assured that many years ago that I I needed to list both TCP IP and TCP IP as skills. All three of them; those are three separate skill, separate skills. That's because TCP IP includes UDP, where TCP does not. Yeah. So the other thing, by the <laughs> way, that, I'm, that that I'm that I'm looking at, just so that you guys know, yeah. is um, because this is a pretty involved architecture. One of the things that I'm contemplating is, and, and I'm reading this fresh because I've left it alone for a while, is if you have enough um, acronyms, at some point you have to have a glossary. It's, you can't just do it in line because people will just get lost, even if it's in the even if it's in an appendix. Yeah. So we did put a terminology, but we didn't put TLAs in that. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, so I don't, I don't have an objection to putting a glossary, particularly if it's at the if it's in an appendix. Just just for the TLAs, I mean, yeah. they get they get a little lost sometimes. But I'm not well, sure. I'm not quite uh, there. Where I'm saying do it. I'm saying I'm I'm, I'm uh, looking at that. I, I prefer the approach where we don't use TLAs ex very much, right? That you might use it in a paragraph or a section. Where you where you expand it the first time, and then the next three times that you use it in the same section, you don't. But I, yeah. if you look in here, you don't see hardly any TLAs in the entire document. You can see as Michael scrolling right now, there's none that I've that I've spotted. So, yeah. So I think I think that yeah I I think yeah. Now you want an, get an example of one that's really hard to read because of the TLAs? Go look at some of the drip documents, and the worst problem is that it includes you know a dozen FAA or whatever TLAs that. Uh, mm -hmm. are really poorly chosen f as far as the IETF is concerned because they overlap. Um, but anyway, um, okay, so uh, we did that. We added that issue for you, Elliot. Okay. I, I apologize. I I have to run. I, I'm, I'm, I'm covering for my, uh, my, my daughter needs a ride. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 
Um, so that was Brendan's feedback. We did that. Clarifying layered attestation. I think that relates to its PR. Uh, well, let's open this one. I opened this PR during the meeting or something. I don't know what. Um, can we talk about your title and just cover the uh, uh, Control W issue? Yeah. Do you, um, want, to it, Do you want me to it, just make that a new issue? It, it, unless it's this one, but it, I, I thought it was another one. But if it's not, then uh, that would be I, something that we're good to see whether we get, can get consensus on here. Okay, so. Uh, at, least, at least among those who showed up to the design team meeting. But. Yeah, I think that. Epic identifiers is the thing that kind of stuck. Um, epic IDs or epic identifiers, I, that, that's what I heard multiple people using in different meetings as being the most memorable term. Do we have any other suggestions, I guess, is the first part? I think that there were like four suggestions of which this one was the most succinct. I think some of them had the word handle in them, like epic handle. No, uh, that, that didn't work. Um, I thought I entered that into an issue somewhere because I remember typing in those four things, but it could have also been I put them into my notes. Was there any other issues felt by me? No. If not, okay, I wonder. Yeah, I must have put it into my notes or something, and then I lost some of my notes because my laptop would got all got corrupted. But anyway, um, there were things like, um, uh, I don't know, something that started with PSKs and stuff that then people didn't like as much later. Um, I know, I know, we copied them into the chat log, I think, in TEEP, which was after rats. Ah. Uh, so right. I think if we look in the chat log for the TEEP session, I think the list is in there. Uh, I think I can find that quickly. that second one. I guess if you search for PSK, you'll probably find it. Or uh, Epic. Um, no, it looks like they're just using Epic IDs here in RAT. So it must have been in the, uh, in, in T, it must have been in the RATs. Jabber or something. Right, sorry, I don't want to take all the time just for looking up stuff in chat, but um sorry, I think it was on the the, the um Tuesday session. Yeah. I didn't make it I to the it Wednesday was. session. It was the Tuesday session, yeah. Okay. Yeah, PSK generated by a third party. Uh, you can see Jeremy suggested pre-shared opaque value. Uh, Hana's public pre-shared secret uh, smiley, meaning maybe that's a funny thing. But uh, Sorry, yeah, where is Jeremy, I just can't see his name. Jeremy is about seven lines go. down from your highlighted. Yep. Opaque is something that we already actually used at some point, and. Uh... It was debated. I like opaque somehow in some contexts. I uh, I mean, it's not always opaque. <laughs> yeah, I, I like fewer syllables and epic ID yeah. or epic identifier, epic ID so being fewer syllables. There also the term epic bar. As I'm also saying epic now. Epoch, dang it. Epoch bar was uh, uh, thrown into the mix, I think, by Carsten Bormann. And ID and trigger. Although trigger is uh, only cool when you look at the uh, thing itself, when you uh, distributing as a, as a trigger distributor, mm, well, you know, so uh, um, yeah, but epoch ID and epoch bar. Okay. I think. Is there anybody that doesn't 
they would object to using the term epic ID or epic ID, depending on which way you like to pronounce it, because that seems to be the one that people were the most or the the, the least disenamored with. I mean the. Yeah, I, I don't I don't agree with the problem at, at first. So so that is a problem. I think I don't think that handle is overloaded just because something it's called something handle. It's an epoch handle, and I think it's qualified, and that is not a problem. That, that so, is my very first answer, to be honest here. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I don't have a problem with the word handle. Uh, I prefer the term epic identifier over epic handle. But it is identifier is fine. ID could be both identity or identifier. Yeah, yeah. That's so, the, hmm. that, uh, yeah, I agree with you there. Uh, epic identifier so far is, I, I meaning, even if I didn't have a problem with that, with with uh, handle, I, th I still like Epic Identifier better. So if we were, if we were voting, which is it contracted? ITF doesn't vote, but is it contracted Hank, like this um, or not? Hank, there is also um, the word handles ought to be used by the DOI system, the RFC. Uh, RFC, you know, uh, yeah. I'll give you the RFC number. The handles. Yeah, system. That was one of the points that was made that there's a bunch of other uses of handles that they. Didn't at least I think Russ was one of the people that brought it up, and other people agreed. So. Yeah, Russ should know. Yeah, he's old enough. Yeah, so <laughs> 30, 30, I, I, 650. Yeah, so so everything here is used already. I think identifiers also use a lot in things. So I think it's even more generic than handle. So it does not really solve a problem. But if you think that is a problem worth solving, I'm fine with that. So I'm not I'm not voting against it. I'm just oh, yeah. highlighting we are substituting a specific problem with a more generic problem. Mm. Yeah. So okay. Hank, I take it is your point is you should always start with the word epoch. Yeah, that's true. And whether the thing that comes after that is handle or identifier is not a problem. Handle itself might be a problem, but if it's always an epoch handle, then that would be uh, your preference. Um, my preference is I prefer identifier over handle, but completely agree with mm -hmm. you that starting with epic in all cases and never just using the word by itself. Like you would never use the word identifier by itself either. It would always be epic identifier or epic handle. Mm -hmm. I guess the issue is that we have this document, which is not actually in our, actually it's a informational, not a standard. Um, when is it CNRI and the handle system with uppercase letters and, and it no qualifier to, for it. Yeah. And it refers to uh, domain name service and all these other very high level, very ubiquitous things. Um, yeah. I'm not married that's to why handle, I but think he's is, concerned yeah. about the, was, the was, bare word. The bare word, yeah, first of all, and also um, there was a lot of discussion on this already. Handle is already a, a second round compromise. So we're gonna do a third round. I'm, I'm not I'm not yeah. arguing against that. Okay, I'm just observing we've got about one minute left in our scheduled time, so. Oh, Hank, are, yeah. are, are you gonna go with with one of these? Can you have an epic identifier, Hank? I, um, I will just abstain on this boat. I would like to see epoch bar there because I said it. And I think I have to say that for Karsten Bormann, yes. So, um, epoch bar is that what it, you said? I don't, exactly. know that I don't know what that means. Bar that you Maybe pass by. It's like when you sprint Olympics and there are bars you pass, and then you get points and go into the new epochs. <laughs> Whatever, it's okay. This is like something. It's like a thing. Relay. It was his. I'm just relaying it. I think he would like look weirdly at me when I don't relay it, so I did, and that is it. Okay, unless it involves alcohol, I don't want to talk about VARs. But anyway. <laughs> I, um, I kind of agree. <laughs> uh, so I'm assigning this to you, Hank. What? And we're out oh, of time. Yeah, it's, uh, thank you for the puns, all, all of you. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, yeah, that's mine now. Okay, I will keep okay. care of it. So um, I'm just going to say that, that we, so we have 22, 23, issues here um maybe we'll close some without fixing them but that implies that we have around 20 pull requests to uh generate and i think that we really need to get this done in the next six weeks i don't know if we need to add a second meeting during the week but uh i'd rather i'd rather i'd rather have more pull requests than more uh time yeah. together i agree I, I i suspect it would be more efficient for us to not have two meetings each week 
Uh, and do the you hour. Say, yeah. If you want a second hour, use that hour to generate pull requests yourself. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll talk again next week, but let's be talking about uh, specific things. Yeah. Um, and um, you're going to, I would like to do this, yeah. close this one this week. And actually, I think that maybe we should issue a draft with those changes just so we have a better basis to work on. Um, so we're not tripping over um, editorial changes. I mean, obviously we're going to merge into master, but I, I still think that it's useful to, anyway, you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. Talk to you next week. Thanks, Bye. Bye.